Let's discuss the Chinese and Western medical thought, its history and issues. The core theory and concepts in TCM were developed when, they, when very little was understood about human anatomy and physiology. Unlike Greece and Rome in antiquity, ancient China forbade dissections as the human body was considered sacred. Ancient Chinese descriptions of the organs in the human body and substances contained were therein were therefore simplistic and often conjectural. However, the theory built around these entities become, became more complex in order to explain observable physiological phenomena, diagnose illnesses, prescribe therapies, and contend with complications of changing symptoms as illnesses progress. Essentially, TCM theory consists of a number of idealized models within which entities and concepts under mutual relationships are presented in a manner that renders them applicable to the diagnosis and treatment of illnesses. The TCM picture of the human body is highly simplified. Besides skin, bone, and connective tissue, the body comprises organs, three basic fluids, which are qi, blood, and jinye, and the pathways, uh, namely meridians or channels, and along with qi and other entities can travel. The healthy body is one in which there is internal balance and normal flow of fluids and energy. Illness is expressed as a condition or conditions under which these flows are impeded and or a number of entities are not in balance. Such pathological conditions are known in TCM as syndromes. Syndromes in TCM have some similarity to syndromes in Western medicine in that they comprise a number of typical or defining symptoms forming a distinct clinical picture indicative of a particular underlying disorder. The underlying disorder is pursued in Western medicine to be attributed to microorganisms like virus, bacteria, and fungi. Unusual cellular behavior, a dysfunctional immune system, abnormal endocrinal secretions, and the like, or a combination of this. For example, the irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, is exhibited as a recurrent dyspepsia, abdominal pain, and irregular bowel movement, the cause of which is unknown. The treatment is largely one of providing symptomatic relief. In TCM, the syndrome of weak spleen and stomach chi exhibits similar symptoms to that of IBS. The treatment addresses the underlying imbalance by providing a tonic for chi and promoting its flow. The basic causes of illnesses are classified into external pathogenic and internal pathogenic factors. And external factors comprise mainly climatic influences, which include heat, cold, dampness, dryness, wind, and summer fire that can invade the body. Internal factors comprise harmful emotions and improper living habits. External and internal pathogenic factors upset balance and interrupt smooth flows in the body, causing illness. TCM models can thus be seen as attempts to explain the pathological conditions underlying illnesses. Diagnosis and therapy then consist of identifying these pathological conditions and finding matching therapies for them. This approach is knowing differentiating the syndrome and applying appropriate therapy known as Bianjing Bunji. The core approach of TCM treatment of illness is thus basically directed at establishing balance and unimpeded flows rather than at eliminating germs or correcting abnormal cell behavior of cells, as is the case of modern biomedicine. In a nutshell, TCM treatment is directed at resolving syndromes rather than overcoming disease. 
the race sun day tree being that eliminating the symptom takes away the basis for the continuation of the disease. Thank you for listening.